this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan channel. Just this morning, Attorney John Deaton announced that he no longer thinks that the SEC v. Ripple case is going to settle. He thinks it's going to verdict. And I'm going to share with you um, all the thoughts, opinions, everything that he expressed in full context. And you know, within the last few days, I put out a video on this topic because he had previously put out a poll. It's the poll that's on your screen for those of you that are looking. Uh, December 27th. And uh, he asked the community, uh, in 2023, the SEC v. Ripple case either settles or goes to verdict. Those are your two options. 59.2% responded settles. That's what most of the community seems to think is likely. And 40.8% re uh, responded goes to verdict, which is what I selected. And uh, that was out of over 18,000 votes. That's a pretty big sample size for a poll like this. And um, it doesn't mean that I have 100% conviction, but I've been saying this... Well, the whole time we've been talking about this, you know, the further we get into this legal process, the le day by day, the less confident I am that we'll see settlement. So by the time I talked about this a few days ago, I was thinking, yeah, it's not that I have 100% conviction. I was saying stuff along those lines, but um, it's still possible. And I'll still see the point it's possible even today, but we're in a new year. And if, if memory serves, even attorney Jeremy Hogan was like, if it doesn't happen by the end of December, folks, and I'm paraphrasing here, uh, yeah, probably not happening. And so after that threshold, I, I'm like, I'm even more, <laughs> uh, I'm even more confident in my, my vote in terms of this uh, going to verdict rather than settling or going to jury trial, frankly. Um, so I'm going to share with you everything attorney Deaton had to say. And um, in this new information, um, I learned that there is a scenario in which Judge Torres may require the Hinman emails to be shared publicly. And, and whether or not we ever end up seeing the Hinman emails, the good news is the judge has reviewed them or she will. Uh, so she'll be able to see just how dishonest the SEC has been. And you can be sure that at a minimum, this won't curry any favor with her. And, uh, and additionally, this is really interesting. Additionally, it no longer seems likely that XRP was mentioned in any of the Hinman emails, which I know it will sound like a complete surprise uh, to many in our community, and rightfully so. But in John Deaton's estimation, and I think he's coming to a very reasonable conclusion, it's not probable that XRP was listed at all. So then, you, of course, my question, well, why, why even hide this stuff then? Why, why hide the hidden emails? Well, we'll get into all that. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And so here is what attorney Deaton had to say. 2023 SEC versus Ripple thread. Will the case settle? After 18,000 votes, the poll below shows 59% of people believe a settlement will happen. To be honest, 59% is higher than I would have guessed. And I was paused to say here, and I, I don't think I said this a few days ago, I was a little surprised I mean, I wouldn't have been extremely surprised with either result, but I was a little surprised it was tipping in that favor. I, I just kind of would have assumed that most people at this point, with how late in the year it was in 2022 at that point, most people would have just thought, yeah, it's not happening here. But um, I was in the minority, actually, in voting the way that I did. I mean, there's no perfect right or wrong answer, but uh, still, I was just citing, I was a little surprised. It seems like Attorney Deaton was too, to some degree. And then he says, a year ago, I believed a settlement was likely because the SEC wouldn't want the Hinman emails made public. And I'll, I have to pause again. So I'm stopping already again twice. But uh, I, I felt the same. And I'm not ashamed to admit that because that is based on a publicly available information. To me, that's what seemed probable. And looking back at all the information that was probable or, or available at the time, yeah. Look, well, look at how the SEC was behaving. Can you blame me or Deaton or anybody else that feels pretty similarly? Why are you going to these lengths to hide the Henman emails if there's nothing in there that's going to destroy the case? Well, it, it may end up being as, as simple as, even if it's not going to destroy the case, it looks really, really bad for the SEC. Maybe it is as simple as that. But a little bit later in the video, you'll see why uh, it doesn't look like XRP was included in any of the, the, the Hinman emails. Anyway, Attorney Deaton continues. It, it was my opinion that if the emails were extremely valuable to Ripple and extremely damaging to the SEC, the SEC would settle before turning over the emails, drafts, and comments. That didn't happen. Instead, Ripple has now cited the Hinman emails in its opposition briefs. Although the SEC asked the judge to seal the documents, if the judge considers the Hinman speech emails in her decision in any regard, 
the emails and documents become judicial documents, and the judge will order the documents to be filed on the public docket with a few redactions. So folks, just to be clear, that means if the judge cites this at all, it's going to be public record. So let's hope for that, because I am so curious to see what's in here. Even if XRP legitimately is not listed, okay, fine. I still, I have to know. I feel like I just have to know what is in there that Brad Garlinghouse was saying is it would just shock us. Attorney Deaton continues. There's a good chance, however, Judge Torres does not rely on the Hinman emails or drafts in her ruling and therefore allows them sealed. Judge Torres has implied that the Hinman emails, drafts, and comments are relevant only for purposes of cross-examination slash impeachment. Of course, she may have ruled that way before reading the emails herself. The emails are now part of the official record and have been cited to by Ripple. If we review the redactions in context, we can surmise a lot. Ripple's opposition brief cites the emails on page four. Now, folks, here's what I'm going to do. For those of you that want to read what's on here, there are four screen grabs Attorney Deaton shared. I'm not going to read them, uh, but I'm going to scroll through right now as I'm talking, and you can pause as you want if you want to. So it just everybody's got... Uh, the reason I'm not going to read them is because Attorney Deaton does a perfect job explaining what's in them, but if you want to read it for yourself, I, for, for all those people that are interested in that level of detail, I want to give it to you, but for the sake of time, I'm going to keep on rolling here. So that's the fourth one right there. All right, and so Attorney Deaton says... Again, uh, if we review the redactions in context, we can surmise a lot. Ripple's opposition brief cites the emails on page four. In the redaction below, two words appeal, appear, rather, redacted. When you read the entire paragraph in context, though, it's safe to say one of the words is confusion or speculation. The director of trading and markets, Brett Redfern, replied that the Hinman speech would cause, quote, more speculation, end quote. And I'll just pause to note, this is Brett Redfern right here. This is on the official SEC website, former uh, director. So he's the director, again, of, uh, I think John Deaton just said a second ago, uh, Division of Trading and Markets. So starting back in like October 2017. So that's the guy that's being referenced. Um, and then uh, John continues and he says, I surmise, oh, let, actually, let me make this one full screen again for those of you that want to see it. This is another one, a, a separate screen grab and a separate tweet. And then I'm going to move on. All right. And then John says, I surmised it was more confusion, but Neil demonstrated it was more likely to say more speculation. So let me just pause and make sure everybody, especially if you're not looking at the screen, you know what we're talking about here. I just shared that last screen grab. There's a redaction for probably one, two or three words. You just guess just by glancing at it and um, having to do with, you know, these Hinman emails. So we, we don't know for sure what's in there technically, but there is a... Um, a Ripple employee, actually, named Neil Hartner, who um, was kind of trying to figure this out himself. And so he typed this up. He took the same font and spacing and everything, and he just typed it in. And he was trying to figure out what words might fit precisely in there. And it sounds like he might have figured it out. So Neil, uh, who happens to be a, a Ripple employee, I think he's a software, what is his title? Software? It's a software engineer, yeah. And, um, and so he, he, he took the time to kind of figure this out. And John was just sharing that. And so John said, I surmised it was more confusion. So he's thinking the words that were redacted might be more confusion. But Neil demonstrated it is more likely to say more speculation. And so the sentence would then read, um, warning that Hinman's 2018 speech would cause more speculation. And so that's a warning. That's a warning from Brett Redfern, who was then with the SEC, might cause more speculation. Um, and so we're speculating a lot, speculating about if the word speculation is in there, but we're, we're going with what we got here. I think that's it, it's given how it fits. I mean, and with context, what else might it be? I think he'd be, there's a good chance he actually probably nailed that on the head. And then attorney Deaton says in the redactions below, there's a second redacted word from Redfern's email. It reads Redfern quote, deliberately recommended giving industry participants redacted, presumably to give the agency more room to maneuver end quote. And I'll just make this full screen for just a few seconds again for those of you who want to uh, take a look at that. And I'm going to keep on going along here. Uh, and then John says, in context, it reads something like opaqueness slash vagueness, et cetera. All the four pages above are included in Ripple's opposition brief. In Ripple's final brief, its re reply brief, it only refers one time to the Hinman emails. Ripple's reply cites the emails 
because of the SEC's attempt to have the court adopt strict vertical commonality. And here's another screen grab. Again, I'm just going to hold it for a second. Feel free to... Oh, wow, that's actually... I can't. I don't even have a way to zoom. That's really blurry. I don't think you're going to be able to see that one anyway. Um, and then Attorney Deaton says, although we can't read that was uh, what was actually written in the email, it is clear that it was a statement about the fact that owning a lot of an asset or token alone is not enough to satisfy the common enterprise a factor of Howie, although the SEC is arguing the opposite versus Ripple. Because Judge Torres previously ruled that the Hinman emails, drafts, etc., may be only relevant for cross-examination and not relevant as to whether XRP was offered and or sold as a security, I'm assuming Ripple lawyers only referenced what they believed would move the judge. Uh, now, prior to reading the last two Ripple briefs, I believe it was likely that XRP was referenced in the emails. Since ETH was getting a regulatory free pass, I believed it possible, if not likely, that someone in the Henman speech email chain might have asked, what about XRP? And let me just pause here. Um, I thought the same thing. And, and, and really, the, the gigantic reason is the SEC's behavior is so, was so, so bizarre on this topic. They never fought so hard against anything else in this case. To this degree, no, nothing else. Weird, weird, weird behavior. And so that's what seemed fishy to me. And that's why I admit, even me, if you've been following, you already know what my position was. If I had to flip a coin, yeah, I was like, probably more likely than not, there's something in there about XRP. Now it looks now it looks like they're not, like that there isn't. But uh, because Ripple would have, you know, probably you know, cited that in the reply brief. But um, it, it's, it's just, what, what can we do but speculate based that's on the ridiculously fishy, very strange behavior from the uh, prick asshats at the SEC? And then Attorney Deaton says, some may disagree, but I now don't believe XRP was referenced in the emails, comments, or drafts. If XRP itself was referenced in the emails, the Ripple lawyers would have certainly referenced it in the briefs. Even though redacted, we should be able to pick it up in context. Yeah, and so I'll just pause and note, ah, if you're surprised by this too, well, that's normal. I mean, I, I'm a bit surprised to, like, to some degree, just because, again, because of the SEC behavior, but I, I don't think it's probable at all that XRP is mentioned in any of the Henman emails at this point. And then Attorney Deaton says, although the emails and comments will likely show some underhanded crap by the SEC, I don't believe they are as damaging as people, including me, once believed. If they were, I believe the case would have settled by now, and the emails wouldn't have been turned over to Ripple. Exactly, and so now we have seen how things have developed, and we just have to adjust to the circumstances around us. You don't hold on to beliefs that, as things evolve, no longer make sense, and so it's a very fluid situation. I no longer think it makes sense, and neither does Attorney Deaton. That's just my personal opinion is. Um, <clears throat> Attorney Deaton then says, Yes, I am aware of the tweets below from Brad Garlinghouse and Stuart Alderati stating the emails were worth the wait and expense, and the SEC's conduct was shocking. Even if the emails prove former SEC officials acted improperly, reckless, or with bad motive, it doesn't change the analysis. The SEC has argued, and I think the judge agrees, that the motive behind why the lawsuit was filed is irrelevant as to whether XRP was offered slash sold as a security. Even if the emails show that Hinman and others acted improperly, it doesn't change the judge's job in analyzing XRP. It is clear that the SEC is coming after other tokens and projects, and uh, it has a it has a case against Dragon Chain, calling uh, Dragon so DRG, and so I guess I don't know what the shorthand for it would be because I I, I don't I just I've never researched I just know that the SEC is attacking them and it's offensive just as every other lawsuit by the SEC is, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, maybe it's just Dragon Coins, DRGNs, anyway. But it's an ERC token, and the, again, the SEC's calling them securities. Uh, John continues, the SEC filed the Wahi case claiming several ERC-20 tokens are securities. ERC-20 tokens are governed by the Ethereum blockchain. Hinman said Ethereum was sufficiently decentralized. Look below at the redacted footnote. See how Hinman's new test is referenced. I guarantee the Hinman emails will be sought in discovery by other litigants. They have an absolute right to this discovery as suggested by at BlackberryXRP on Twitter. And um, here's a screen grab 
for those of you that want to take a look. And just pause if you want to read it, because I'm going. All right, and then Attorney Deaton says, Considering ERC-20 tokens are governed by the Ethereum blockchain, these litigants arguably have a greater right to these emails and discovery than Ripple did. In other words, one could credibly argue that the Hinman emails and drafts are more relevant to ERC-20 tokens than XRP. If Ripple can argue a lack of fair notice, these ERC-20 tokens certainly can. Moreover, there's already a ruling and analysis by Judge Nepern and affirmed by Judge Torres that these emails are not protected by the deliberative process privilege or attorney-client privilege. Uh, so yeah, it's just pause and note, and this is another thing that's worth considering. Maybe part of the reason that uh, they were willing to hand it over, at least something that crossed the, the, the asshat attorneys at the SEC's minds, is they're like, well... I mean, it, it, I, not that they would f necessarily fight any less hard, but they had to have thought of this. It's probably going to come out anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then John says, in sum, I believe the SEC has accepted that the emails will eventually become public. In fact, in Brad Garland House's tweet, he said, when the truth is eventually known, we will be shocked. It is my opinion now that the Ripple case will not settle because of the Hinman emails. In my opinion, the only other reason for Gensler to settle is to avoid a ruling setting a bad precedent for the SEC as it goes against other tokens. But to be honest, I just don't think he's too worried about it. There's been a push for the CFTC to oversee crypto, so Gensler may roll the dice. I think the library ruling emboldened him and the SEC. I also believe SBF and FTX have given Gensler more ammo to use in his war against crypto, as many of you know. Six months ago, I predicted he will sue an exchange in the very near future, and it's coming. In sum, unfortunately, I think a settlement with Ripple is not in Gensler's mindset. I don't believe he's going to settle and publicly agree that ongoing and future XRP sales, including in the secondary market, are non-securities, and Ripple won't settle unless the SEC so agrees. Thus, I am in the 39% who answered the poll believing that we will get a decision by Judge Torres. So there you go. That's the rationale for interesting perspective from Attorney Deaton. I always appreciate it. So I would love to hear from all of you listening. What do you think in terms of the probability of something XRP actually being in the Henman emails? And I'd also be very curious to know, at this point in time, now that we're in the beginning part of 2023, we're this far in, has it swayed you just as more time has passed to think, we're not going to see settlement because it's definitely impacted me. And and look, there's also a, a real possibility, and I don't know that it's probable, but there is a real possibility that this could go to trial, a jury trial, rather than the judge making an outright decision. So we'll see. Let me just know what you think in the comment section below, but I am out of here for now. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.